man. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to episode of Pat Tay's Performance. Today in the driveway, hopefully, the last episode on our Poolin Pro PR24 $100 fix and flip. Well, it's not gonna be the last part, but for the most part, we are at the home stretch. Once we rectify this issue, we could literally, physically, move on from this and begin the service end of it, upgrade the impeller, and put it up for sale. Now, I hate to get a little bit ahead of myself because I'm not sure what the heck to do, but I'm not sure if I'm going to restyle the machine or leave it as is. Do the wheels stay yellow? The wheels stay black? I don't know. I don't know because the auger yellow whiting, the writing is yellow, so we shall see. It ties in all together, but in my opinion, it looks like... So, that's just like gaudy. I don't know why it bothers me. It's like, you know what this reminds me of? Like a car with too much chrome. Like chrome wheels, chrome window trim, chrome everything. Meanwhile, I would change everything to back and leave the wheels chrome. I think we are going to keep all the trim pieces yellow and color match the wheels black. Anyhow, lots of fantastic feedback. I mean, I can't stress this more than enough. Fantastic. Excellent job in the comments. Lots of people is what I like to see. A lot of you guys caught things that I didn't even think of. Because I wasn't processing the repair in my mind, I just wanted a more of liar, liar, pants on fire, a good feel of the machine and, and whatnot. Um, when I was editing the video, I thought that maybe the cable will go here instead of here. Now, people were commenting about this spring here. Let me, I'll zoom you guys in. I'll zoom, zoom, zoom you guys in. Okay, a lot of you guys were, I thought maybe one of these springs will go here. This I think is gonna stay here because see this goes here, that will stay there. For it to go up here, I think this is at max adjustment. There's another hole here or maybe this spring, no. You see, if we pull this spring over here, I think this is at max tension. Okay, this is loose and it's starting to rub through here. Now the question is, is this adjustable? But this is the drive, this is the drive. So can this be pushed forward any more than what it is? And that, there you go, there's our Scooby-Doo mystery. Found it. Part of it, part of it. Check this out. <clears throat> Whew. We're gonna pay attention at the tensioner pulley for the drive belt. It's 30 degrees out. Where's Mrs. Pat Tay's performance when you need her? Actually, no, we're gonna get a better view. I'm gonna drop you guys down. Hold on. Here's our issue. This is exactly what's happening. Tensioner for the drive belt. Auger pulley, look, it catches here. It catches here and it can't move forward. So it needs to come out. So maybe this is too loosey goosey or this needs to be pushed forward. Or can we keep additional support out. You see this here? This is adjustable. Can we loosen this and increase the tension forward? So let's start. You know what? You know what? Let's pull the belly pin. Maybe we can get a better look of inside here, but I think, I think we're on the right track. What do you guys think? Okay, so we have to service the machine anyway. So we're going to kill a couple of birds with one stone as we do this. So in the service slash upward dog position we go, 
fuel is off. Okay, and we are going to pull. Let's just do this. Why not? You pull the wheels. This cotter pin is going to come off. <clears throat> And we are going to start the service on this because we are going in here, right? It's stupid of me or foolish of me to pull all this stuff, the bully pin off, to de go deep inside and not grease and service the machine. So service position. Um, I'm going to polish these shafts real quick, get them nice and shiny, and then we will resume. Shares are polished. <clears throat> Let me just clean this here because this is for resale. Let's let's clean up this little little dirt thing. Okay, so <clears throat> I think maybe you guys have a question for me, Jason. If you were fixing this machine for somebody else, would you do that while you're in there? Yes, yes, I would. Because if I'm fixing the machine now, if I'm fixing the machine now, who do you think's gonna fix it later? And no, I will not charge them for that little bit that I do. You don't even have to mention it. If you want to mention it, go for it. Uh, let's see here. These screws are loose. There must be a cover here that's missing. Why are these loose? And there is nothing attached to it. See this gap? Look at that. There's a gap right here. There's a cover missing. Son of a... Oh Lord, okay, so these look like one, two, and that's it, this cover is missing. Ah, someone's been in here and they had to put everything back together. Okay, so there's actually four screws and it's not 10 millimeters. 10 millimeters is a little loose, this should be three eighths. One, two, three, four up top. We are going to zip these off and you could see that somebody has been in here. These bolts have wear marks just like the other ones on the outer edges. Let's take a look inside. Pop this cover off. And maybe we can get a better idea of this mechanism. <clears throat> this thing is spotless. There is grease on the shaft, but we will grease it. This side is dry. This is phenomenal in here. I've never seen this before where the pulley and the friction plate are one piece. You know what that means, right guys? Yeah. Watch your friction disc. This is expensive if this chews into here. Okay. Okay. I'm just giving this a wiggle. Okay, this, oops, I just lost my microphone. It's gonna be hard to try and get you the shot of what I'm doing. But let's see what we can do. Okay, look right there. Right there. Let me get a little screwdriver. Right here. This is what's loose, and this is right here. If you look further up, this is our blade brake. I think I'm onto the right thing. So I just wiggle something down. Maybe that's a little too loose. So we are going to try tighten it just because. So let's see. Usually it's held on by another bolt on the inside. But let's just see if we can take this. Yeah, it's just spinning. So that's going to suck because the bolt for this is on the inside 
of the actual order hall. It's inside here. You have to move the impeller around. There's a hole. You match up the lines, and we're good to go. Okay. How the heck does that come loose? But more or less, there could be a collar. Okay, and that's its final adjustment. All right, so let's get this. A microphone for it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. Oh, it did fall. Okay. Sorry. Let me see. I don't know even know where it fell off. Let's let's redo this. Okay, so it's loose here. I can't put a socket on there. I tried and I tighten it, it just spins. So this could be that it's too loose or we just have the thing. So there is a bolt on the inside of the auger housing that holds this. In the meantime, um, I'm just gonna grease here and here and here and then we can move on and go on to the next phase. Like I said, I'm gonna start while we're in here with the service aspect. Now, I think this machine should be easy to um, split in half if I'm reading this right. If I'm reading it wrong, then it's not gonna be easy. But let's, let's just grease the shaft. I took a lot of grease, but it is what it is. I think we're gonna paint these wheels black. That's exactly what we're gonna do. These wheels are gonna be black, sorry. So I'm actually gonna throw some paint on these wheels real quick. And the, don't mind me, I'm just greasing the shafts. All right, practice what you preach. Grease the shafts. Okay. Remember, I'm not trying to, nope, I don't wanna do that one. We are talking about Right? These wheels. And we're gonna do the sprocket too. Right? Off camera. Off camera. Off camera. Right? We're just greasing this. Let's take some of this excess grease, put it on the sprocket. You guys know I love to do this sprocket. And we'll give this a spin. And we work the grease into this rocket. I really cannot stress this step, you know, more than anything else. Remember, I said this, this is your first time owning this machine, pull the wheels off. Excuse ah, me. Okay, so now, downward dog, All right? Let's keep this half inch socket out. Now this was at a repair shop, according to him, multiple times and they could not figure it out. Hopefully we can. Can we see if I am right and we're gonna line up the impeller? Nope, I'm wrong. That is inside here. But where mm -hmm. there are holes in this impeller that I'm trying to match up and they're not lining up. Do you want to split the machine in here? <sighs> or do you want to move? Oh, come on, magnet. But do you want to move the tensioner further away? I think we cannot avoid this. I think we're gonna actually have to, we're gonna separate the body. I mean, here we go, executive decision. We are going to separate the body and we're gonna do a little bit of discovery, okay? Um, I'm actually, we're gonna split the body 
and then we're going to gain access to this tensioner bolt. Now, instead of cranking it down like a madman, all right, patience, time, and experience has taught me don't do that. Let's back the bolt all the way out and see if it's actually shouldered because if it's already tight and we try and tighten it, we're gonna snap that bolt. And that's a bolt you just can't get at a hardware store and this project will be dead in the water, right? So let's do that. All right, so by splitting this machine in half, I'm, I'm gonna pull the chute off instead of trying to take all of this stuff off with all the cables. I'm gonna pull the chute out. I'm gonna swing the chute to the side. Now the chute has one, two, three, four bolts on the side, and those look like half inch as well. If that's the case, then we're good. We're good. We're just gonna move right along. And we have the support on the inside. Through. Ooh, you heard that clank? That's the infamous bracket. I forget about that bracket a lot. And come on, come on, stupid microphone. What is this thing? What did I lose my microphone to now? Oh, the other magnet. What the hell is going on? Everything is falling apart. Okay, Whew. got everything, all right. And then I'll show you the bracket I'm talking about. So let's get this out. Support this from the inside. Come on. You know, because I'm so vertically challenged, it's like any little bit, a touch just comes out. This, this. I'll show you the bracket I'm talking about. Just let me get past all these freaking bolts. Get back. Can't curse, can't curse. Can't curse. Okay. Okay. All right, hold on, let's gather. Thoughts? Am I missing? Do I have all four? Hold up. Okay. One, two, three. Is this in here? No. One, two, three, and three. All right. I'm missing one nut and one bolt. Why are you doing this to me? 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 This is what I was talking about, praying to St. Anthony when you lose things. How could I lose it? Okay, here we go. That's four. Now we just need where did the other one go? See, everything is black, which I like, but now the problem is, heck, I can't see anything. All right, I found the access hole, I think, for the auger housing, but that's impossible to get to. Let's see if this is notched more than the others. No. Jesus. What a POS. Come on. Speak to me, child. Where is the last one? I have three. Three of these. Four of these. Where'd the last one go? Did I stick it in my pocket? Oh, come on. Or is it still stuck inside? Let's... Oh, it's still stuck. All right, there we go. All right, let's 
thread this on. There we go. See, I haven't used my Milwaukee M12 ratchet as a hammer. All right, there we go. We swung out of the way. Let's unhook this spring because we don't want to reduce the tension on it. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Put that in there. Okay. Now it comes time to split the machine. Okay, split the machine. One, two. There's gonna be on each side. We'll get the zoom zoom. All right. Same thing on this side. One, two, one, two. These are threaded into the body. It's 30 degrees out. Maybe even colder. And Mrs. Pat Tay's performance is good. She's gonna have to help me, but it's just a little too cold. Especially when she's not feeling well. But we need to move on. Let me get a jack stand. And we'll do it just a little bit lower here. See if we'll get the full view. Okay, so this is our point of contact here. And you see how there's two screws. There are two holes. There. So this is at max tension. Oh, this is gonna suck. Right, let's flip this over on its belly. And then, all right, I am going to show you what I'm talking about, and then I'm gonna be blocking your view for this part of the video, okay? This is um, not gonna be a fun job. I'll just edit all of this out. Okay, so I'm going to try and describe this as best as I can as I spin this. So don't mind me. Come on, microphone. Okay, so when this happens on a snowblower, right, there are holes inside the impeller that we're talking about. See here, see these access holes here? Okay, as I spin this, we're gonna match it around right here. See this? This, this is our bolt right here. But how the hell do we get there? They physically want us to move the impeller. But that's not gonna happen. We're not gonna do that. You know what we're gonna do? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Oh, you know what? I gotta check to even see if the camera got that angle. Jesus, man. Jesus. <sighs> All right, let's see what we're talking about. Yep. This mamma jammer right here. I'm gonna block you. Sorry, it's the way it works out. We're gonna zoom out. And let me get another mat here. We'll get a ratchet there, and we'll see what's going on. I'm gonna try and stick it in here, like so, and see if I can get a good grip. This would be a great time to, well, you know what? This bolt shouldn't even 
full out. Let's see if I have the right one. See how it's spinning? No, that's the wrong one. How is this? What the heck does this go to? Lord have mercy. I'm not saying I'm running out of options. A patient is, is one of them. This bolt we can't gain access to. This is where an inspection camera would be really, really nice. Because even if I remove these bolts, this impeller, we have to drive this pin out. Can you guys see that? There is a cotter pin we're gonna have to punch out. Oh, this is just lovely. I think you guys could tell my enthusiasm for this machine has quickly worn out. If I'm successful, I will brag about it. Huh. Maybe, maybe, did we save ourselves some headache? I put that spring in there. And remember, it's supposed to be in this hole on the bottom that this spring, it kind of took out the tension. And then what happens? Does it want to pull forward? You know what? It's too late. We already stretched the spring. So let's, let's finish this fight. I have a feeling it may not be the answer, but let's try this anyway. And I think they could have possibly done this because that's why this cable is so taut. Okay, this will go here. And remember, we got to make sure that this pulley doesn't catch there. Okay, so let's, oh, this Olga belt is tight, tight boy. You might have to do some cable adjusting, which is fine. <sighs> this is what I hate about these machines. Once you split them, Let's throw two bolts in here and then we will go from one side to the next. I think I know what my problem is. I'm just dreading taking this machine apart. Watch this pulley. As we reactivate the lever, it picks it up and over. See that? It's not, it's not. See that? Up and over. Up and over. So I'm going to pull the, my mat out. And now we are going to, whew, okay, maybe it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Let's get this last bolt out, that's dangerous. And let's, Let's check the in and out, right? We're gonna do two shots, in and out like we see it here, okay? And then we will do the um, front shot of the auger spinning and whatnot.
All right, I'm happy. What do you guys think? Are you happy? I'm happy. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I think we, we cracked it. Um, whew, if I'm a little bit relieved, I'm not gonna lie. I thought we had to open it up, but I think that's the way the mechanism is supposed to go. It's supposed to pick it up and, and over. That having excess play on the bottom. Seems normal to me because it's supposed to pivot, right? That bolt is at, let me get a longer screwdriver and we could show how that works. And I'll explain my science behind the technology. Here is a screwdriver. This will symbolize the arm. It's a long screwdriver. The pivot point is here on the bottom so it could rotate. Okay, so it could rotate. Okay, and as it's further away, see how this screwdriver, I could bend the screwdriver. And I think that that's what's happening is that because it's so far away that it, that's possibly bent over and maybe have even eggshelled, I'm thinking. This is hypothetically thinking. But since we got it to where it pulls it up and over as it tightens it in one fluid mission, I think, I think that is a success. So with that being said, I think I already have flaps cut out for this thing. We're gonna modify the impeller. I will change the oil on this as well. And we could call this thing a wrap. I am pretty much excited for this. Uh, tell me what you guys think. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think we're on to the right track. Oh, and this is the stupid piece I was talking about. <clears throat> this is very important. Right here. This goes like so. And right underneath here. Don't forget about that. I'm taking, yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this because we'll do one more time. Up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's it. That is it. That is the good. That is the good goods. That's it, that was the issue. The spring was in the wrong place or it just needed to be adjusted and the spring will cause it to move up and over. Our belt pulley is still in, in, in great position where it's not gonna walk off. We really didn't touch that. We just kinda just put the spring on there and we gave this a little bit of a, of a, of a push out, you know, and, and I'm happy with that. I mean, heck if we could try. Just leave it, you know, if it's not fixed, don't touch it. That's perfect, I'm gonna call us a wrap. That's it, woo! All right. Yep, and looks good. What do you guys think of the wheels? So much better. The, so, the side profile shot is so much better. So you know what guys, I'm gonna call that a wraps from here. I am going to modify the impeller and change the oil. Um, excuse me. Yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna do a video on modifying the impeller. I'm just going to modify the impeller, change the oil, see you later, love you, bye. I'm almost positive I have a video on this, but if not, you know, it is what it is. A Husqvarna is the same way. All right, guys, if you guys found this video, you know what, how about this? I'm gonna end the video here now. If you guys wanna stay and hang after hours, wink, wink, then we will go through modifying the impeller and changing the oil.
All right, and I'll do a timestamp. All right, guys, you guys found this video helpful. Smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Guess what? I'll see you guys on the next episode of Hattie's Performance. And don't forget that Mrs. and I, we go live every Saturday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Time. If not, guys, welcome to Hang Along. We are going to modify the impeller and change the oil. Okay, we are ready. Um, rectified the auger issue. We, we greased, we polished the shafts, greased everything. So basically, the last thing to do now is to modify the impeller, um, convert this thing to Royal Purpose Synthetic, and this thing is on its merry, merry, blessed heart way. Um, the reason why I didn't want to start a whole new video is because, look, we already have this machine apart. So it's foolish for me to try and do this all over again. All right, so let's talk about this gap. Woo! Look at this gap, boy. Look at this. I could stick my finger in there. That's no good. That's no good. We got to close that up. So I already have some pre-cut flaps. I don't even know where they came from. But let's see if these are perfect. Yep, perfect, right there. I like to overlap them because then there is no, absolutely zero, zero gap whatsoever. So I'm just going through my parts bin and I'm gonna grab some hardware and we're gonna get this done. I mean, this is my favorite modification to do of all time on a snowblower. It is so satisfying and so rewarding, and it's so cheap to do. This is the cheapest performance modification that can be done to your machine. Change my mind, I will argue you, I will argue with you on this. If you believe that this is not the best bang for your buck modification on a snowblower, educate me, teach me, I want you to show me that this is the best one that can be done, right? I show you guys lots of things. So I want you to show me something. So, so just a 5 16 with a washer. And this is the easiest one to do because it's everything is right here. I love you guys already know what's stuck. Oh, come on. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. That looks like a big fat one. That's the wrong one. This already started the hole here, so now we'll just do it. I guarantee you after this video is done, Mrs. Pate is gonna perform, it's gonna be like, I thought you were gonna do my Arians. Oh, I will, sweetheart. I will do your Arians. But, we need snow. We need snow. What? No. Wow, low battery. Where is the time to fly? Where is the time gone? I'm literally gonna stick this microphone in places that YouTube does not find friendly. That's how frustrated I am right now. I should be grateful, right? We, we got away with repairing this machine without it coming apart. I'm confident, I'm confident. And you know what? person has a problem with it, they know how to get in contact with me. <clears throat> hey, listen, I fixed what the repair shops couldn't do. So, winner, winner, chicken dinner for Jason and you guys over at Pat Taste Performance. And listen, even if you were guessing wrong, right, I guessed wrong, right? about what I think the issue was with this, pat yourself on the back that you guys took the initiative to figure out and think about how this stuff works, right? And there were people that don't even, have never ever seen a snowblower, never even dealt with snow, 
give insight to what they think is wrong. This is, what are we hitting? See that? Oh, you have to take notes of this block here. All right. Nope. Yep, perfect. All right, let's get some lube. Okay, we gotta stand you guys back because this stuff is gonna fly up and it's not gonna mess up my camera. Sorry. I don't use no GoPro. Nothing wrong with a GoPro, but uh, just can't do it. Just can't do it. All right, let's see what we got. Fire in the hole. Prime. Oh, wait. I had the fuel off. Fuel on. Durr, dummy. Make sure no tools are in front. I should have done that before. Prime one more time. And let's see what we got. Perfect. Now you guys see that I didn't break this impeller all the way in. So I am going to do this on every impeller two more times. And then I'll show you why. And we'll do this off camera. Alrighty, so all three impellers are done now. And they're semi broken in. I don't break in the last one that I do. I'll break that one with the machine on. I'm just giving this a healthy coat of lube on the inside, right? Now, we must put on our chute. Now this one's a little tricky, but we're gonna do the spring first. And then because this is more than one piece, we'll attach, I think it went on like this. Or did it go, yeah, it went like that. Okay, then this went up in here. I'll get this out of the way, like so. Okay, and then this goes in these holes here. Let me get my kneeling pad, because this concrete is cold. side and then it's going to be distance this is going to be a distance shot now we have to get this bracket in <clears throat> and then we have to start these bolts quick little dab of, of anti-seize on the threads because I have OCD issues and I just can't do that remember this is in the worst spot ever to do this. Well, you know, let's go the easy ones first on the side. So at least we know we could hold this base up. And then we will do That's just 
finger tight. Remember, don't tighten everything down all in one shot, you know, one by one, because then you lose the ability to wiggle and manipulate things where they need to go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Where are you, baby? Right now. bit longer arms. I've got to stick my whole head in the bucket. I don't know if Mrs. Pate's performance ever pisses me off. I could have her head in here. I'll start the machine. Oh honey, can you just... No, I'm joking, joke, 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 terrible joke. Terrible joke. But you guys get the idea. I will. I say, I don't know what happened. The machine started on its own. There's a movie. Do you remember what movie that is? It's before my time. I remember watching it over and over again, like USA, or this movie channel here, does reruns over and over again. It was that car that was like possessed and had a mind of its own. But anyway, so here, this goes right in here. And this is the not so fun part. Oh, come on. I can make the phone. Yep, yep, yep. Last bolt, and I sees, and we're home. should be okay oh now we can tighten everything down now we're supporting the inside this is a carriage carriage bolt doesn't slip and spin and strip. Because it's not going to strip the bolt, it's actually going to strip the housing. And that is not a fun time whatsoever at all. Alright, so now we're perfect. Now we're in there. Plenty of lube. Let's clear everything out of the way and I'll get you guys a good shot of inside the impeller housing. Right, we're not gonna do the outside, we'll just I'll get you guys on the inside. Alright. Time for a good time. Quiet. Here we go. 
We're in there on Lake Swimlayer. I'm actually, I'm not gonna bore you guys with changing the oil. I'll do that on my own. Ah, we're done. Gotta move on to the next thing. We're running out of daylight, as you guys can see. All right, guys, thanks for uh, hanging out. A little behind the scene action. And uh, see you guys on the next one. All right, guys, later. <laughs>